Hello. We are going to have such a fun half hour drawing together. We are going to draw some mini beasts and perhaps one or two of their friends too. I'm Nick. My job is drawing pictures for books. I'm an illustrator and an author too. And you can see lots of the books that I've illustrated behind me. Perhaps you might recognise one or two of the covers. So I was looking through my books trying to find some mini beasts and actually I didn't have to look very hard because they get into lots and lots of my books and lots of books I didn't even realise they were in. Let's have a look. I've got a big pile of books in front of me. Let's have a look at some and find some nice mini beasts to draw. So I think we'll start off with this book, which is called Faster, Faster, Nice and Slow. It's written by me and my friend Sue Heap, who is a very good friend. And we wrote and illustrated this book together. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, and if you look on the cover, you can see some mini beasts, can't you? Well, they're not that mini on the cover. They're quite big. But can you see three snails? Let's have a look inside and see what they're up to. Now, this book is all about opposites. I'm just going to read you a couple of pages. In we come and out we go. Faster, faster, nice and slow. So in this picture, we've got a little girl riding a very fast animal. I think it's a cheetah from the spots. Uh, and that's actually Sue. And then we've got a little boy whose name is Nick. That's me when I was a little boy. And he's riding a much slower animal, a snail, nice and slow. So why don't we draw a snail to begin with? Now, have you all got your drawing things with you and your uh, a piece of paper to draw on? I have two, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the camera back like this. So you can all see my piece of paper and I'm going to draw a snail and you draw along with me. Now, I don't know what you're using to draw with, but if you're using a pencil, uh, it's quite a good idea to press down nice and hard so you get a nice dark line and your picture will look even better. So if we're going to draw a snail, I think we should start off with the body. A snail's body, which is a bit of a sausage shape, if you ask me. It looks like a sausage that's curled up at one end, like that. And in the end that's curled up, let's give it a little face. And then I'm going to give it two sticking up things on the top of its head. So now lots of mini beasts have these. Do you know what they're called? They've got a very fancy name. They're called antennae. So it does look a bit like a slug at the moment. What it needs is a shell, doesn't it? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here. I'm going to do a straight line going up that turns into a curved line like that to make a snail's shell shape. And then inside that shape, I'm going to draw a curly whirly shape going round and round like that, which always reminds me of Swiss roll. Do you know what Swiss roll is? Oh, I love eating Swiss roll. Anyway, that is our snail's shell shape. How did yours turn out? Now that snail looks a little bit to me like it's flying in the sky. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to do something I like to do to make my animals look like they're standing on the ground. I'm just doing a little bit of shadow underneath that snail's body like that. And all of a sudden it looks like it's on the ground. Don't you agree? Maybe perhaps I might even add a few tufts of grass here and there, to add a bit of interest and show that this snail is crawling through the grass very slowly. Right, now, I haven't really got time to colour in my pictures now, and you probably haven't too, but you can colour them in later. They'll look fantastic with colour. I'm just going to add a little bit of colour because I can't resist doing something in that snail's shell. Uh, you could do all sorts of shapes in your snail shell. You could do um, spots or you could do stripes. I'll leave it up to you, but I'm going to draw another. I've got a red pen here. I'm going to draw another curly whirly line inside that curly whirly line, carefully going round again like that to make a quite a nice pattern. Don't you agree? OK, so that is a snail to start off with. How have your snails turned out? So I'm going to take the camera back. And let's have a think. What else can we draw? What would be another good mini beast? Oh, I know. How about something that's yellow and stripy, sometimes black, sometimes brown stripes and buzzes? Do you know what I'm thinking of? 
I'm thinking of a bumblebee. Uh, and there's one in this teeny tiny book, but if I hold it up to the camera, it's a bit bigger, isn't it? It's called A Bear with a Pear. Let's find the mini beast in this book. Here we are near the end, a bee with peas. So there's a bee looking rather pleased with itself and looking at a pod of peas. How many peas in the pod? One, two, three, four, five. So there's a nice stripy bumblebee. Now I must have drawn some others. I'm sure I have. Oh yes, there's one on the cover of this book, which is a book that you might know. It's called Shark in the Park. Did you know that there were some mini beasts in this book as well as other bigger, stranger creatures? Here we are. There we are, another bumblebee, a stripy bumblebee on the cover of this book. And I'm sure there's another book. Oh, yes, this book, The Whales on the Bus, which was written by Katrina Charman, and I drew the pictures. And, uh, well, whales are not mini beasts, are they? They're gigantic beasts. But in here, there are some mini beasts. Let's see if we can find them. I think they're quite near the front. Yep, here they are. Bees on skis. Three bees on skis. What a funny thing to draw. Um, we won't give our bees skis, but we will give them lovely stripes. So what I'm going to do is take the camera back to the paper. Let's say goodbye to the snail for now. And we might draw too many bees on the same sheet. So I'm going to get a lovely clean sheet for myself. And we'll start off with a bee. We'll draw a bee on this side of the paper, and then we'll draw another mini beast on the other side of the paper. So what shape is a bee's body? A bee's body, I think, is a, an oval shape like this, or an egg shape, do you think? So then over here, I'm going to draw close to this edge, this side, I'm going to draw smiley face, two eyes, a mouth, and some eyebrows. I know animals don't really have eyebrows, but I think it's quite fun to give them eyebrows now and again. So then we need to give the bee some stripes. Now, make them quite nice, thick stripes. And see how many you can fit in with a bit of a gap between each one. OK, so I've managed to do two so far. Can I fit in another one? I think I can. Yeah. So that's three stripes for my bee. And then it's flying through the sky, so it needs some wings. So I'm going to draw a wing here, sort of a bit like a petal shape. And then the other wing is on the other side of its body. So we don't see all of it because it's tucked behind this, this wing on this side. So there's my bee buzzing through the sky. It doesn't need a shadow underneath of it because it's high up in the sky. But it does need a friend, I think. I think it needs another mini beast for a friend. Let's go back and see if we can find a friend for it. I think there was one in the whales on the bus. Let's have a look on another page. Um, yes, on this page, we've got a tiger in a glider doing a loop the loop, flying in circles. But that's not the only creature on this page. Can you see a teeny tiny insect with its own parachute? It's a ladybird, isn't it? It's a ladybird. So there's a ladybird in that picture. And going back to Shark in the Park, Shark in the Park is actually chock a block with mini beasts on every page. There's a page in here with a big cat, but also a dinky little ladybird down there. So let's have a go at drawing a ladybird next to our bumblebee. Right, let's just get that nicely on the page. Oh, look, who's over here? We've got a bumblebee and the shark in the park there, haven't we? So let's draw another oval shape over here, just like the bee's body. We're going to draw another oval shape like this. And then we're going to draw a line, again, not in the middle, but over on this side. 
which is going to be the ladybird's face. Now, ladybirds are black and red, aren't they? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw two quite big circles for the ladybird's eyes. And in the middle of those, do a little dot like that. And then underneath those two eyes, I'm going to draw a nice happy mouth, which is a semicircle shape like that. And then I'm going to very, very carefully colour in around the eyes and the mouth. Now, you've got to be quite patient and careful doing this. But it's worth it. It gives the ladybird a lovely face. So carefully colour in, trying not to go over the lines into the eyes or the mouth, but colour around them. And there's the ladybird's face. Now go back to the body and draw a line right across the middle like that. And the ladybird has got spots on either side of its body. So I'm the same number of spots. So I'm going to draw one spot here. And another spot here. And then one spot here. And another spot here. Whoops! My ladybird and bee are trying to fly away. Okay, so the ladybird needs a couple more things. It needs some of those sticking up bits on the top of its head, some antennae, and it needs some legs because it's not flying. It's not using its wings. It's not flying. And it has six legs. So I'm going to draw two front legs, two middle legs, and two back legs. And I think we should draw something for it to stand on. So what I'm going to draw is I'm going to draw a leaf shape like this, going right round for it to stand on. And I'm going to add a little stem here. And you know, I can't resist doing a little bit of shadow in my bumblebee like that. And we've got some spaces here and here, haven't we? So how about drawing some clouds? Clouds are always good for filling in spaces. So I'm going to draw one cloud there and another cloud here, like that. And there is a nice picture of two friends, the bumblebee and the ladybird. OK, so I'm going to take the camera back like this. And we'll think of something else to draw. Another mini beast. Oh, I know, another mini beast. Uh, quite a wriggly, creepy crawly mini beast. I don't know what you feel about these creatures. Let's find one. Back to this book. There's one in this book. Uh, it was actually on one of the pictures we've already seen. It was on the bees on the skis picture. Do you even notice over here? There's a little spider on a ski lift wearing a bobble hat, looking very pleased with itself. They don't normally wear bobble hats, do they, spiders? Um, have I drawn any other spiders? Yes, I drew a much bigger spider in a book called Something Beginning with Blue, which was written by my friend Sally Symes. And in here we've got a spider on this page. Oh, that's a really big spider. That's not a mini beast, is it? That's a ginormous spider. And this person over here, this is little Miss Muffet running away from her tuffet. We won't draw a big hairy spider like that. We'll draw quite a nice sweet spider, I think, because they are good animals. They do good work, spiders. And they also are very clever and weave those beautiful spider's webs, don't they? OK, let's draw a spider next. So. I'm going to treat myself to another sheet of paper. And we're going to draw another oval shape like this. 
drawn a lot of oval shapes today, haven't we? And in the middle of that oval shape, I'm going to do a little V-shaped nose. Smiley mouth. Two dots for eyes. And some eyebrows. Now, how many legs does a spider have? A spider has eight legs, doesn't it? Four on either side of its body. So when I draw spider's legs, this is what I do. I go up and then I go down. So that's one spider's leg. It looks extra spidery if they are in two sections like that. So we're going to draw four on this side. One, two, three, four. And we're going to draw four on this side. One, two, three, four. And there's a happy spider. Let's give it a thread to hang from. I'm going to draw a thread. I can't go very far because I'm quite near the top of my paper, but if you've got a bit more paper above your spider, then you could do a longer thread. So there is the spider. So what have we drawn so far? We've drawn a snail, a bumblebee, a ladybird, a spider. How about something that's a different shape, um, more of a long wriggly shape? What do you think? What animals, what mini beasts are? long and thin and wriggly. Well, there's actually written on the cover of this book, the word wriggle, this book is a book of poems by the very famous uh, writer, Julia Donaldson. I bet you've heard of her name, have you? She's written lots and lots of really wonderful books and she wrote this book of poems and I illustrated it. And it's called Wriggle and Raw. And what's wriggling on top of the word wriggle? A little, worm a wriggly worm and what's roaring by the way down at the bottom quite a friendly looking tiger so we've got a tiger roaring and a worm wriggling but we're drawing mini beasts today so let's have a go at drawing a wriggly worm back to the paper Treat myself to a new sheet of paper and I'm going to draw a worm at the top and then we might give the worm a friend too. So let's draw a worm's body. So I'm going to start off with the worm's head over here. I'm going to draw a sort of a curvy shape like that and then I'm going to take my pen on a bit of a wriggly journey over to this side, make the tail quite thin and then make my Worm's body gets a bit thicker as I come back to the head again, like that. That's quite wormy looking, isn't it? Let's give it a face. Now, have you ever looked closely at worms? They've got interesting bodies because they seem to be made out of lots of little sections. So quite carefully draw some thin lines on your worm's body like this. All the way down to the tip of its tail like that. That's quite wormy, isn't it? I'm going to put a bit of shadow underneath it as it crawls along the ground. I might even give it some little wriggle lines like this to show that it's wriggling as it moves. I think that's enough. Who would be a good friend for a worm? Another mini beast that's the same long thin shape. Can you think of any? Let's go back and see if we can find one in one of the books. Uh, which book shall we go with? Oh, I wonder where. Oh, I know. Here's another Julia Donaldson book. This book is called uh, Hippo has a hat, and it's a story about animals going shopping for clothes, which is a really good story. And in it, there is a mini beast buying some shoes. Let's have a look. Shoes for caterpillar. A caterpillar. There you go. Caterpillars have lots and lots of legs, don't they? So this caterpillar needs 10 shoes to fit its feet. It's sharing its page with a gorilla. Slippers for gorilla, shoes for caterpillar. So two mates out buying footwear. 
let's draw a caterpillar next. Now, a caterpillar's body is long and thin, like a worm's body, but it's actually made out of different sorts of shapes, like this. Now, that looks a bit like a bean, doesn't it? Or a, a little egg. I'm going to draw a whole row of these shapes. One, two, three, four. I wonder if I could squeeze 10 in. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yes, ten of those shapes in a row. And then a bigger shape at this end for the caterpillar's face and head. So let's give it a face. It's got those things sticking up on the top of its head again. Now, what were they called? They're called antennae. So two antennae. And it's got lots and lots of legs. I'm going to draw a pair of legs in each section of its body. So two in there, 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 two in there. Lots and lots of legs. And you get smooth caterpillars, don't you? And you get hairy caterpillars. I think it might be fun quite to make this a hairy caterpillar. So I'm going to draw some hairs coming out of each of those segments too, like that. Make it really like a hairy caterpillar, like that. And can't resist, put a shadow underneath it. There we go. And again, when you colour in your pictures, you can have such fun colouring in your caterpillar and your worm. I mean, the worm, I think, I've, I've, all the worms I've seen are a sort of a pinky colour. Um, so I would probably go for a pinky colour for the worm. But caterpillars come in all colours. I'm, I have only got a red with me, but I'm going to give it a red stripe in each of those parts of its body. It's quite fun to do, isn't it? Like this. Okay, so that is a wriggly worm and a stripy caterpillar having fun together. They want to wriggle away. My paper keeps wanting to fall off the, the easel. Okay, so what happens to caterpillars when they grow up? What do they turn into? Do you know? I can see one on screen. I can see a butterfly. They turn into butterflies. And butterflies are beautiful mini bees, aren't they? So I must have drawn some butterflies in some books. books of, oh, I have. I've drawn them. Oh, you naughty paper. My naughty paper keeps falling off the easel. <laughs> Where is a picture of a butterfly? Oh, I found two. I found two on the cover of this fairy story written by me and my friend Stephen Tucker. It's called Little Red Riding Hood. And here she is about to go for a walk in the forest. And she's got two butterflies to keep her company fluttering along there. So there are some butterflies. Um, are there any other butterflies? Yes, there are some in this book. Do you remember um, Nick and Sue from uh, Faster, Faster, Nice and Slow? Well, this is another Nick and Sue book called One to Ten and Back Again, which is a counting book. And in here we've got six butterflies. These were drawn by Sue. And look who they're flying around with. They're flying around with five bumblebees. So those bumblebees do get everywhere, don't they? Very pretty butterflies. Let's have a go at drawing a butterfly next. Right, now let's find some more paper. Hopefully this paper will behave itself and not fall off the little easel. There. Bring the camera forward. 
So let's draw a butterfly, shall we? Let's start off with a round head and a long, thin body like that. Little smiley face. And those two things sticking out on the top of its head again. What are they called? They're called antennae. Two antennae. Maybe I'm going to do a little bobble end on both of those antennae. And then what does the butterfly need? It needs some wings, doesn't it? Now, butterfly's wings are sort of in two sections on each side. So I'm going to draw a top section like that. It looks a bit like a leaf, doesn't it? And then I'm going to do the same on this side. Try and make the wings about the same size on both sides of your butterfly. And then it's got slightly smaller wings in the lower section. So there's one wing. And here's another wing. So there's a butterfly with four wings. Now, you do get plain butterflies. You get white butterflies, don't you? They're called cabbage white butterflies. Uh, but it's lovely to add some colour as well. So I'm going to get some colours. I've got my red pen and I've managed to find another colour too. Uh, so what am I going to do? I'm going to do, you know how much I like drawing curly whirly shapes. I'm going to draw a curly whirly red shape there. And a curly whirly red shape there. You can do whatever you like. Any shapes you could do in your wings and any colour. So I'm going to do a green curly whirly shape there. And a green curly whirly shape there. Um, but you could do spots or stars or zigzags, really anything you like. You could really use your imagination, make your butterfly as colourful and as beautiful as possible. That would be wonderful, wouldn't it? You could use all the colours you've got. OK, so there is a pretty butterfly. What shall we draw next? I tell you what we're going to do. We're going to draw a beast that's a little bit bigger than a mini beast, um, but not much bigger, a little furry animal, who I'm sure would be friends with the mini beasts. And there's one on the, oh, in fact, there are two on the cover of this fairy story. This is another fairy story. This one is called Cinderella. Do you know the story of Cinderella? Can you see two mice there, two little mice and a pumpkin? You know what happens in the story? In the story, Cinderella wants to go to the ball, doesn't she? And it doesn't look like she's going to go until her fairy godmother comes along and does a bit of magic. And she says to Cinderella, find me two mice and a frog and I will turn them into, oh, and a pumpkin. And I will turn them into a coach with two white horses and somebody riding the coach. It's very shiny, this paper, but can you see the coach, horses and the horsemen uh, that were before they were a pumpkin, two mice and a frog? So that's a great story, isn't it? And I think we should draw a mouse next. Let's draw a little mouse. And then perhaps we might draw a froggy. OK, I'm going to find, take the camera back and find another sheet of paper. OK, some fresh paper. And this time we are going to draw a mouse. So we are going to start off with a pointy nose over here and two big round ears like that the mouse's face and then we're going to draw a little curvy body like that okay so pointy nose two big ears curvy body then we're going to come back to the front of the mouse and we're going to give it a face two eyes some eyebrows, a little nose, and a smiley mouth, and some whiskers. And then we're going to come here, and we're going to give it two front legs, one leg here, and one leg here. So those are the front legs, 
Now to make sure we get all four legs in, I'm going to go to the back and I'm going to draw two more legs quite close together with little toes on the end. And then I've got room to give it a mouse's tummy in the middle. Anything missing from this mouse? A tail, quite a nice long tail. There's a mouse. I'm going to put some shadow underneath it, aren't I? And it's looking ever so pleased with itself. I wonder why it's looking so pleased. Perhaps it's found a piece of cheese. I'm going to do a wedge of cheese over here. You know that cheese that mice really like that's got holes in it. There you go. I'm going to put a bit of shadow underneath that too. So there's a mouse, a little tiny mouse. Mice can be, what colours of mice come? They can be black or grey or brown or uh, white. Um, you choose what colour your mouse is going to be. Uh, can it be orange sometimes even, perhaps? It's up to you. You choose. So we've drawn a mouse. Shall we draw a frog now? Yes, let's get some more paper. I'm running out of paper. We've done so much drawing together. Let's find another sheet of paper. Here we are. And let's draw a frog. So I'm going to draw a frog. So what we do first is we draw a curvy line like this with two little bumps where its eyes go. And then we give it an oval shaped face, a couple of nostrils, and a big smiley mouth. Right, let's have this frog sitting down. So, what I'm going to draw next is I'm going to draw two legs with webbed feet. One, two legs like that. And then I'm going to draw two curvy lines coming down like this and the frog's going to be sitting with its back legs tucked underneath its front legs so just draw two shapes like that and then there's a little line you need to put between if your legs aren't touching you need to do a little line between them the frog's tummy that's an important little line don't forget it and this frog is looking very happy perhaps it should be sitting on a lily pad so why don't you draw all the way around your frog a leaf shape like that, which is a lily pad type leaf you see in ponds and frogs really like sitting on lily pads and I'm going to do some lines like that. Uh, and if I had some time to colour it in, I'd colour in the lily pad one shade of green and maybe I'd colour in my frog a different shade of green, two different shades of green, one of them light green and one of them dark green. Have we got time for one more character to draw, one more little creature to go with our mini beasts and our little animals? Uh, yes, I think we have. I think we could draw one more. This one is quite a prickly character when you look at it. If you've been lucky enough to see one in real life, very, very prickly. There's one in this book, which is called Animal Music. And again, this book is by Julia Donaldson and I drew the pictures. Right at the front, we've got a hedgehog, a hedgehog, hedgehog strums. No, hedgehog hums, sorry, hedgehog hums, squirrel strums, and badger bashes on the drums. So, this is a book about animals playing musical instruments. The musical instrument that the hedgehog plays is, is, is its voice. It's the singer of the band. And here is a hedgehog with a microphone. That's a funny thing to draw, isn't it? I don't think we'll give our hedgehog a microphone, but we will give it lots and lots of prickles. So let's have a go at drawing a hedgehog to finish off. I'm going to move the camera, the paper. And for our final picture, let's draw a really good hedgehog. So over here, I'm going to draw another pointy nose like the mouse. But this time, the ears are a lot smaller. So I'm doing one ear there 
and one ear here. So two little ears and a pointy head. And then I'm going to draw the body. And now the body is very, very prickly. So I'm going to draw zigzag lines going all the way around like this to the back. Then I'm going to come back to the front of the hedgehog and I'm going to draw two front legs here, quite close together. One, two, with toes in them. And then I'm going to go to the back end and I'm going to draw two more legs quite close together. This is a really good way to make sure you get all four legs in and hopefully it leaves you a little bit of space to draw a tummy in between them. Uh, let's give it a nose here and two eyes and eyebrows and a smiley mouth. All our animals have been happy animals today, haven't they? Right, now let's draw some more prickles, spines on the hedgehog's body like this. I'm not going to draw them on the face, but I'm going to draw them everywhere else like that. Give it a really prickly body. Uh, can I fit a few more in? I don't know if you can have too many prickles on a hedgehog. They seem to have hundreds, don't they? And then last of all, a bit of shadow underneath it all. Like this to finish it off. Right. So there is a hedgehog to finish off our drawing session. How did your drawings turn out? We've drawn loads of things, haven't we? Let's remember them. We drew a snail and a bumblebee and a ladybird and a caterpillar and a worm. And uh, what else did we draw? Uh, oh, I'm forgetting a spider. And we drew a mouse and a frog and a hedgehog. Goodness me, we have had a busy session, haven't we? I hope you've enjoyed it. I've really enjoyed drawing with you. Um, and I'm sure your pictures look fantastic and have lots of fun colouring them in. So I'm going to say goodbye now. And one other thing I'm going to say to you, happy drawing. Bye bye.